Welcome to our lecture online and here is a good example to get us a better understanding of how to do double integrals. So here's a really uh, good representation. We got two curves, one defined by the equation y equals 2x squared, the other one by y equals 1 plus x squared. And we're going to try to find the area enclosed by those two curves. So the way we do it with double integrals is we define a small little area. Let's call that little area dA. And dA is of course equal to dx times dy. And to find the total area, we're going to take our small little area element and integrate in the y direction first, and then integrate it into in the x direction. So we'll do it twice. So to find the total area, this is equal to the integral of the small little area element. In this case, in the small, small little area element, it consists of dx times dy. That will then become a double integral of dx times dy. With When we integrate in the y direction, we have y limits, and so we'll call that y1 to y2, that's the upper limit, the lower limit, and then x1 and x2. Now it just so turns out that I chose y1 and y2 correctly because the upper limit will be the upper curve defined by y2, and the lower limit will be the lower curve defined by y1 when we integrate in the y direction. So when we integrate this in the y direction, we'll end up with a small little strip. Upper limit will be this curve, lower limit will be that curve, and then we'll integrate from left to right in the x direction, so my lower limit will be negative 1 for x, my upper limit will be positive 1 for x. So we'll just go over the entire area like that. So one step at a time, we're going to integrate in the y direction first, which means that my dx becomes like a constant. Dx doesn't change when we integrate in the y direction, so we can simply take that and put it outside the integral sign, so we can write, read this or write this like the integral of dx from x1 to x2 times the integral of dy from y1 to y2. And then we integrate the dy first. So that's an easy integral. When we integrate dy, we get y. So let's move that over here. So that's equal to the integral of dx from x1 to x2 times the integral of dy, which is simply y. And that's going to be evaluated from y1 to y2. And so that's easy. We plug in the upper limit, and then we subtract when we plug in the lower limit. So this will be equal to the integral from x1 to x2 of dx times y2 when we plug in the upper limit minus y1 when we plug in the lower limit. Now we want to integrate this a second time. Of course, when we do that, we can't integrate a y variable with a dx. We have to find the x equivalent of those. Luckily, we have the equations right here. y1 is equal to 2x squared. y2 is equal to 1 plus x squared. So what that becomes then, and we're going to write the dx on the end, this is equal to the integral from x1 to x2 of y2, which is 1 plus x squared minus y1, which is 2x squared, and the whole thing multiplied times dx. All right, now we can simplify that a little bit, and let's plug in our limits of integration for the x dimension. And so this is equal to the integral. So we're going to integrate. The lower limit is going to be minus 1 for x. The upper limit is going to be plus 1. We have 1 plus x squared minus 2x squared, so that's minus 2, oh, not minus 2, but one, minus 1x one squared, right? Minus 2x squared plus 1x squared is minus x squared. And then we still have the plus 1, and we have a dx. All right, now we're ready to integrate over in the x direction. So now we'll have this strip. Now we integrate it from left to right. And so this is going to be equal to minus x squared becomes minus x cubed over 3 plus x evaluated from minus 1 to 1. So now we plug in our upper limit. So this is equal to we have minus 1 over 3 plus 1 when we plug in the one for here and the one for there. Now we're going to subtract from that when we plug in the lower limit. And so we plug in the lower limit, we get minus 1 cubed, which is minus 1, times 1 gives me plus 1, so therefore plus 1 third. Plug in a minus 1 over here, we end up with minus 1. Okay, now we can get rid of the parentheses. I always like to use parentheses when I plug in the lower limit so I don't make a mistake with all the signs. It gets very confusing. So let's now get rid of the parentheses, apply the signs, so this is equal to minus one third plus one minus a third plus one. So I just simply got rid of parentheses. Now I can combine like terms. So I have two minus two thirds 
which is equal to one and a third, and that's equal to four thirds, however you want to write it, in a mixed form or improper fraction. <clears throat> and that would be the result, so the total area between those two curves is equal to four thirds. Again, it's an illustration of how to do uh, what we call double integrals. You take, start with a dx dy, integrate first in the y direction, use your y limits that are defined by these curves, then integrate in the x direction, and then use the ultimate limit on the farthest left and the farthest right to get the total area. And that's what you get. And that's how we do double integrals.